All right, y'all, it's been a year and a half that we've been on the road, and we have another first. For the first time ever, Hey y'all, this is real life. On Broken Dreams Reborn, we bring you real life stuff. So what happened was we, uh, Sean and I, each got a package from Walgreens. I don't mind telling you where it was from. And they were medical packages. So we each got one. They got shipped separately in separate boxes. Hers came yesterday on Wednesday and mine, even though it came from the same place, came today. No big deal, right? Wrong. The address to the RV park where we're at is where it was supposed to be delivered, my package, right, from Walgreens. So instead, we found out a second address is where my package was delivered. And then there's a third address, a guy who's a horse rancher around here, had his packages also delivered to this third unrelated address. So I called FedEx and I said, listen, your driver is dumping these packages out here in the country on one porch for the whole area. Sometimes these drivers get lazy and they don't want to deliver it to, from house to house or building to building. So don't always assume somebody stole it. Sometimes you need to start looking around. Now I don't get credit for that. The RV park owner is the one who found it. So that's what happened to us. And that's just keeping it real. Hey y'all. So we are still in Idaho Falls and we got our hair cut. I know a lot of people <laughs> wonder, you know, the same with the doctor. How do y'all get your haircuts when you're on the road? This is like our third haircut, I think, since being full-time RVers. We usually go about six months before we get it trimmed and get a really good trim. But we mm -hmm. just go to Google find the hair salons in the area look at the google ratings and then see if they have facebook pages and stuff but we've been really um blessed with the hairdressers yeah. that we have found we've had one in new orleans one in wisconsin dells and now one in idaho falls so no scary reviews you know no before and after pictures that'll freak you out on the internet so. yeah so if y'all are in any of those three areas and it's time for y'all to get a haircut just um comment below and we'll tell you the hair salons that we found but and we don't go to high budget ones mm -mm. but we don't go to the five dollar special either so somewhere in sort of yeah. in a comfortable medium but the main thing is google reviews and also when it comes to finding doctors with our insurance i don't know if we mentioned this but you just go to whoever your network provider is ours is blue cross and find doctors that are in network and then also look at their reviews yeah and in our case the insurance will have a website that tells you what doctors are in network and then like she said look at the reviews but it's not scary nope so we went to Jackson Hole a couple of days ago and I got their famous huckleberry fudge. One of our friends, Vince, told us to stop by this um, candy store. And I can't remember the name of it. Was it Yippie.io or something? <laughs> we'll type it down below. And he said, you have to try their huckleberry fudge. So I went in there. And what color do y'all think the fudge is? Usually when you think of fudge, you think it's, it's like a chocolate color, like a brown color. Well, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here it is, y'all. It's like um, a purple color, because I think huckleberry is like purple. I'm gonna take a little nibble. Mm -hmm. That is really good. It doesn't even taste like chocolate. It just tastes like um, a sweet berry thing. How many of y'all have had huckleberry? Leave me a comment below and let me know if you've ever had the huckleberry fudge. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Today is our explore day and we're going to do something a little different today. We are going to go into Idaho Falls and see what that is all about. Yep, urban exploring. Alright y'all, for all of our Anderson Hitch fans, there's the Anderson Hitch place. I'm not sure if that's the headquarters, but that's Anderson Hitch in Idaho Falls. Is that a lawnmower? 
lawnmower. Yeah, automatic lawnmower. Oh, look, y'all. Past Matthew, it's an automatic lawnmower. Look at that. That's so cool. All right, gotta go. That's neat. That is neat. So we decided to cross the river. We went back to Walmart to get diesel. And then I saw this street. Y'all, there was even a wedding dress walking across the street. And that was pretty neat. So now we're going to show you what Idaho Falls, or why it's called Idaho Falls. Exactly. All right, y'all. This is our street parking spot that we found here in Idaho Falls. And what is the name of this street that we're on? We are on River Street. So, if y'all want to come to Idaho Falls and see the falls, which we're fixing to show you, we recommend coming to River Street. River Street and Broadway. And if you turn to follow the falls on River Street, you'll find all this parallel parking, mm -hmm. which I love. We'll let you know when we're done. If the truck is still here, then we will highly recommend you park here. <laughs> this is Idaho Falls. Part of it. Not even the whole thing. Oh, look at the geese walking up there. Oh, yeah, they're right on the edge. Here's, oh, look. I know, that's so neat. Hey, y'all, we're at Idaho Falls, and if you like this video... Give us a thumbs up, it's free. Here's the geese that we showed you that crossed the top of the falls, and there they are. They all made it across. And here's the beginning of the falls. How many of y'all have seen geese walk on top of the falls and not fall over? Leave us a comment below. All right, y'all, this is the sidewalk that what lines River Street. Another little dugout area where you can kind of get close to the falls and see them. Look how neat y'all this is. My favorite part of this, Matthew, is all of the geese walking on top of the falls and this is in the middle of a city y'all downtown idaho falls and here's their famous falls all right y'all look at this cool bench it looks even cooler because matthew is sitting in it i know that's neat what do you think of it every bench everywhere should have its own roof it's very neat i'll show you on oh. the back of it what Come over here. Look off in the distance. Ow! Someone was hurt during the filming of this video. <laughs> it was her. It was his fault. It Maybe he hit my head. Oh, come oh. over here, bull. Because <laughs> I control your legs. I mean, come on. Seriously, y'all. All right, y'all. Idaho Falls lets you rent these scooters, and they just have them all over. It says no. Um. I guess you scan the what the QR code and then you pay somehow. Yep. Huh. Yeah, that's it has neat. A number on there. And we parked really close to the Quality Inn Suites on this street. And would you recommend parking on this street? Yes, because we've seen the pull-in parking and it's really close together. And if you don't want door dings and stuff, this is the way to go right here. Yeah. Hey. So we are fixing to head in, I think it's the other part of Idaho Falls called Ammon. Maybe we're going to go to the mall first and then go eat. I don't know. Are we eating first and then the mall? Ooh, time to eat. And y'all, if we're going in the mall, I might get some more Bath & Body Works. They sent me free money to use in the soap run, so they're even cheaper this time. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll show you my stash if I get it. <laughs> what do you mean, if? I know you're going to pick up something. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Guess where we're going to eat lunch? Red Robin. Yum. Yeah. Have you heard the commercials? <laughs> they're like, Red Robin, yum. We finally are in a town that we see this Red Robin, so we have to go check it out and see what it is all about. All right, so I got the big haystack, and you got what? It's a barbecue burger. Turn around so I can see while the music's been playing. Yay! And then this is cheese bacon fondue. Uh-huh. So we just got done eating that Red Robin, and the reason we didn't give our review in there is because they played music in there. Yep, copyright strike. When we ordered the burger, she said, well, how do you want your burger cooked? 
And she said either medium or well. I said, can I have medium well? Because that's what I usually get. You get medium or you get well. <laughs> and then she said pink or no pink. And I'm like, well, I'm like, well, I don't want pink, I guess. So that's what we both ordered. My burger was burnt to a crisp. Ugh. Yeah, mine wasn't terrible, but um, I'll tell you what they do. A good burger sometimes will have a good char on the outside. Mm -hmm but they had char and then more char and then it was just really and i know some of you are thinking well you ordered it well done i mean <laughs> no well done just means cooked all the way through well done doesn't mean go play some basketball come back and then take it off the griddle yeah so it was a little too much char even for me so so i would say the only thing that was good was the fries and the cheese dip, but that I'd say good. save your money and go to like Carl Jr's. We've been there twice so far. Yeah. In Idaho Falls, our first time ever going to a Carl's Jr. and we have no complaints with their burgers. So Red Robin was not yum. <laughs> now Carl's Jr. It's just fast food. It's mm -hmm. nothing fancy, but it tasted to me an awful lot like Burger King. It was mm -hmm. tasted like flame broiled. That was a good burger mm -hmm. both times. Yeah, we hate. I we, enjoyed that. Right, we hate being negative, but they did have good fries and good um, cheese sauce. But yes, oh, if you want a burger, save your money and go to Carl's Jr. and you'll get a much better burger. I think so. We've always been mm -hmm. pleased there. Yep. All right, now we're gonna go shopping at to Matthew's favorite store, Bath and Body Works. <laughs> Yay! More soap. <laughs> All right, y'all. Matthew's fixing to show you <laughs> what we bought. <laughs> Speaking from experience, you're gonna want to hold the bag from the bottom. Don't trust the bag. Oh my goodness, my arm hurts now. There's all my soap. I got ten because I got a ten dollar coupon for signing up for Bath and Body Works Rewards. Plus, I got an email offer where the soap was three twenty five, so I wound up getting it for two twenty five. Yep, we got 10 things of soap for $23.85 with tax. Can you believe that? Yeah, I think Crazy. said we saved like 53 or 55 bucks. Yeah, discount. don't ever get Bath & Body mm -hmm. Works full price. Get it on sale. So when we go to the grocery store, we save all of our Walmart bags. And the reason we save these bags is because when we boondock, it's so, look how small it is. You can just put enough trash in here and then tie it and it's easy to find trash cans to just dispose, you know, like little city dumpsters and stuff, or little trash cans. But this is where we save this, and I'm afraid to show y'all, so y'all don't make fun. We take these bags, and we've got this huge bag, and then we just stuff them in here, so we need all these bags. This is horrible, y'all, so I'm gonna fix this, so let's pull this out. Falling all over the floor. Y'all, look at this! Ah! I don't know who hates this more, me or Matthew, but look what I'm gonna do, y'all. And we're probably not gonna be able to save all of those bags, but we got this at Walmart. It's like a, um, a giant cereal dispenser, and I'm gonna stuff all of these bags into here and it's gonna look so much better under that cabinet and then I hope I can organize it even more. So let me see how many, put, put a comment below, how many of these bags do you think I'm gonna wind up stuffing in here? 25%, 50%, 75% or who's gonna go for all 100%? What do you think, Matthew? Do you think I can put all of them in this thing? Yes. All right, let's see. How do you want me to do it? Matthew, what do you think? Should I do one at a time or just stuff them all? I'm thinking one at a time. One at a time because when you pick one out, you don't want a whole bundle of mess coming up with it. So okay. I'm thinking one at a time. All right. All right, y'all. So this is almost 100% because we only have like maybe what a handful of bags that just weren't good so it didn't make the cut but how many of y'all guessed 100 percent it was probably like 98 percent could y'all believe all this fits in here and i'm gonna get matthew to push it down and put the lid on all right matthew what do you think of this contraption i love it look at it and we still have room to spare but these bags aren't any yeah good, those so bags aren't good can i put the lid on yeah put the lid on all right 
do. Oh, okay. Okay, so how are we gonna take bags out? Just pull. Y'all, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Look are at this. I feel like Ron Popeil, and if you know who he is, put it in the comments below. Set it and forget it. I don't know who that is, so <laughs> yeah, leave a comment because I want to know. But y'all. We ought to be on QVC pull selling that, this thing. Look at this. that bag up, the big bag that everything was in. You saw this was overflowing. Uh-huh. Now, put that container in there and just see how much room. Look at this. It's like a before and after weight loss picture. <laughs> Y'all, it is all about space when it comes to RV living. I mean, look at that. Look at look this. Look at how skinny that. this is. Look. That's amazing, y'all. So, yeah, that's our RV tip for y'all. Buy a cereal container and you can stuff a hundred of your favorite grocery store bags in here. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. I know it's been a year and a half, but we're just now getting to organize. Look at that. Amazing. That is amazing. And y'all, eh, listen, y'all see those sponges? And he wants to talk about me being a soap hoarder. He's a sponge hoarder. My sponges weigh nothing, I'd like you to know. And you should throw them away every couple of days or so. Don't keep your sponges forever. That's nasty. All right, so show them all in a row all of my scents and y'all leave me a comment below what is my favorite bath and body work scent of all time okay so now i have to figure out how to store this all right so i got this collapsible storage thing from the dollar tree the dollar tree is your friend well it's the dollar 25. oh this is wider than i thought it was gonna be thought it was skinny. I thought this was smaller. Anyways, it looks nice and neat, doesn't it, everybody? <laughs> Alright, y'all. It's supper time in the BDR RV, or it's fixed to be supper time. Matthew is fixing us another ninja quote, inst or aka Instapot. It's a ninja foodie, but if you have an inch to pot, that's mm -hmm. fine. Any modern pressure cooker. It's one of our favorites. I think this is like our third or fourth time to have it now. It's cube steak with, um, what's the con connection? The gravy that we make with it? Well, I'll show you. And it's normally we don't go step by step, but this is so simple. Cup and a half of water, French onion soup, cream of chicken soup. We use a little fat kind. You can use any kind you want. Au jus packet. Au jus. All right, now we stir before we put anything else in there. Now look, this is a pack of one and a quarter pound. If you act now, we will double your recipe. So this will be good for us for two meals. There we go. Hi, 20 minutes. And that's it, y'all. I'm not look. gonna get too close, but. Look at this. Yum! Mashed potatoes! And in the microwave is our green beans with Italian dressing. Yay! Look how good that looks. So this is our, what do we call this? A three course meal. Monty's yep. a gourmet cook, y'all. A fancy RV meal. Alright y'all, it's been a year and a half that we've been on the road and we have another first. For the first time ever, we've got ants. Yep, that's a first for us. In a year and a half, we've never had ants. Let me show you. This is our wet bay. This is where all things water and tank valves and all that stuff happen. So, look under here. Here's your gray hose. We use this for the black tank flush. Here's your blue hose. We use this for the fresh water, the drinking stuff. They were climbing up the gray hose. Now it might not be our fresh water hose, but it's still a water hose, and I don't want to spray it with poison, but I had to. I mean, it was kind of emergency mode because there was a big trail of them. I didn't have time to wait for a trap to, you know, like a little ant trap, a little bait station. I didn't have time for that to really take effect, so I just had to spray what I had to spray. And they seemed to go away for a little while. And then yesterday, Thursday, they came back. 
they were coming up the gray hose again. And inside the wet bay, they're climbing up the gray hose. The very first time they were actually making a home between this plastic sheath and the hose itself on the gray hose. You know, that's like a millimeter space. But if ants are anything, they're industrious and they will find anything to make a home in, no matter how small it is. So this last time, Thursday, yesterday, I see they're crawling all over this. And like I said, this is emergency mode because there are tons of them. So you know what I had to do? I had to spray all in here, all in here, on this wall. And y'all, I know, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're telling me, or you're thinking to yourself, you don't spray poison in the wet bed. You don't spray poison anywhere near your fresh water. I know, but I didn't have a choice. And now I have the bait station. This is taro. It usually takes two or three days to work. So then I think I have it under control. I got the bait station out. I poisoned the majority of them. And then guess what happened? You know what happened. It was time for bed. And we're removing these pillows off the bed. And what do you think I saw? Yes, that's right. Back here by the headboard, on the headboard, and on the wall, a bunch of creepy, crawly, little ants. Little pavement ants, sugar ants, whatever they are. I mean, they're not gonna hurt you, but still, it's disgusting, right? You don't want these things crawling all over you. So I sat there with my tissue, playing find the ant, squish, squish, squish. I kept doing this. Now, fast forward to today, which is Friday. All this happened yesterday, Thursday. On Friday, I haven't seen anymore. Not out, not inside in the bedroom, thank God. I've only seen that one outside in the wet bay, and I let it go because I'm not sure if it went through the poison or not. I'm not sure if it'll track it back to its, you know, group. I don't know, what's a group of ants called? A hive? A colony? Ant colony? I don't know. Tell me in the comments below. I don't know what they're called. Y'all, since we've been here in Idaho Falls, we started purging. Now, we have been RVers for a year and a half, and we finally started purging. Let me show you. All of this is from one room, though. We didn't even get to do the whole RV. All of this stuff came from our bedroom, y'all. It's trash and a lot of stuff that we're going to donate, but all of this is going out of the RV. Can y'all believe it? Just one bedroom. Now, I can't wait until we get to go through all of these cabinets here in the kitchen and the living room and the, um, what is it called, the, the basement storage. We're just going to have a lot more, but this is just the beginning and it feels good to purge. I mean, you never think, you know, starting off, you're like, well, you purge from your house. And you think, well, I only brought what I needed in the RV. Can you believe we didn't need this stuff in a year and a half? It's amazing. Leave us a comment below. How is your purging go or how often do y'all purge? We are at 7 Inn Ranch in Rari, Idaho, just outside of Idaho Falls. We got in here okay. I mean, it was a little tight. I mean, the road was, but we're not positive that we're going to get to leave here, at least in one piece. <laughs> yeah, like they have several exits and entrances here, but the problem is they're doing construction off to my left. So they've got all sorts of, the, the crew have all sorts of trailers and bobcats and stuff. And then elsewhere, another exit, they're doing site construction. They're adding like a patio to one of the sites. They're going to put a big park model in there. So it's just the road is extra bumpy and they got big dirt piles and stuff. So. I mean, we have a way to get out, but it wasn't our first choice. So, and it is a Saturday, and we want to leave on a Sunday, so hopefully they won't be working on Sunday, and maybe the roads will be more clear for us to get out mm -hmm. safely, because we don't want any flat tires. You know, that's another thing about construction. Oh, you have yeah. to worry about, you know, nails and debris and stuff uh, hurting your tires. So stay tuned for next week's episode, and we promise you'll know whether we made it or not. <laughs> right. Since we're talking about, let me see, other things we don't like about this place is, I think I've already mentioned it in a site tour, but they put these sprinkler heads oh, like yeah. right on the gravel. So it's like you don't get even an inch to maybe move over 
for your slides to open up, but we were able to maneuver okay for our slides to come out. Yeah, but we really can't go over anymore because they're the little cheap plastic sprinkler heads and the camp host said, oh, I have to change these things all the time. People are always driving over them, so we didn't want to do that to her. And it seems like that's the only, their main concern about this place is their grass. Not the roads, which they yeah. should fix and maintain. Um, there are some positives. Uh, one of the positives is these people are nice. Uh, when they talk to you, even if they don't hold up their end of the teal, they've at least been nice and pleasant to us. And when it comes to getting packages, they let us get packages. If there's something wrong with getting your package, they will try to help you out. But it was convenient to Idaho Falls, which oh, yeah. has everything, y'all. If there's a city that really has... Does a Hobby Lobby, then you know that you're in a good area to get all of your shopping on. They have, I'm talking about everything. And the reason that some of you may be in areas where it's like, this city has everything, your neighboring city has everything, and the one after that has everything, and then some. We spent all summer in Wyoming, mm. and we <laughs> love Wyoming, mm -hmm. but there's not a whole lot in between major towns, like just not. So this part of Idaho mm -hmm. is kind of the same. Yeah. Ryrie, Rexburg, uh, Rigby, all that stuff. There's not a lot there. So when you get to Idaho Falls, there isn't anything they don't have that we need. And yes, the pests have still found us. Um, what as was it here? Stink bugs and oh, ants. Yeah. Oh, our first time ever. Our first time ever getting attacked by ants. Now, I think, as I said in, before in the video, I think that most of them are gone. Time will tell. When we when these reels roll and we go to our next place, then we'll find out. And the amazing thing, y'all, I don't know what it is about these bugs. They love our bedroom. And I like our theater mm -hmm. seating, but they're not comfortable to sleep at night on. No. So why do these bugs attack our bedroom? It's like, come on, I want to sleep in the bed. Even though it's not the best mattress, we <laughs> do still need to upgrade the RV mattress. We yeah. got that foam, you know, the Walmart foam topper, so... So if you own a mattress company and you want to sponsor us, hey, we need a bed. Right. <laughs> um, don't, here's a word to the wise, don't crush stink bugs. You can squish an ant, you can swat a fly, you take the stink bugs, you put them in a little styrofoam cup mm -hmm. and you shove them outside, you don't hurt Show them. Show them your little contraption, you just have it setting right there, y'all, this is funny. I have a stink bug kit. <laughs> Part A, part B. You take this and you just kind of nudge them into the cup and then you just fling them out the door. That way it doesn't stink. And I do not partake in this because these things fly. Y'all seen flying cockroaches? These are flying stink bugs. And they look freaky looking like in, from outer space, like an alien. And they're not Ew. small either. No. You know how a fly sounds. You can put up with that a little bit. A stink bug sounds like these horse flies did at 747. Yeah, y'all, We it's like October 1st, so we still have three months left of 2022, but 2022 has definitely gone down as a year of the bugs and the pest for our RV. Put down in the comments below, Sean needs her own stink bug kit. I think she needs one. 